the Japanese-only SD Gundam Dimension War, Nestor's Funky Bowling, Mario's Tennis, the Japanese version of Jack Bros, Virtual Boy Wario Land, Panic Bomber, the Japanese-only Insmouse, Red Alarm, Tower Boxer, Vertical Force, this is the Japanese version, Bound High, on a Flash Boy Flash Card, and the Japanese only V Tetris. Welcome back, everybody. This is Hard for Games. We are your hosts. I am Tony. I'm Richie. What are we talking about today, Richie? We're talking about this thing, the Nintendo Virtual Boy. Uh -huh. It was released in 1995 and discontinued in 1996. Is that, do we know if that is or is not the shortest lifespan of any console of all time? We're going to be covering the console today, but primarily covering the games. And probably some rare games. That's well, the complete Virtual Boy Well, lineup. a little more, <laughs> more than this. There were like 20-some. <laughs> but we're going to be covering some games today that you might not have heard of, because despite the fact that it was a very small library, there's actually a decent amount of difference between what was released in the U.S. and what was released in Japan. So for our review, we did actually play these on actual, real, semi-working Virtual Boy hardware, but for the purpose of showcasing footage, we're utilizing three different emulators. Now you may ask, why three different emulators? Because we had to. Because the Virtual Boy emulators kind of suck. They're very, very... Very bad. They're very incomplete. We try... Bad. To, we try they're two, bad. We tried two on a PC, one on Mac, and they had a variety of problems, uh, including not being able to customize your controller options, which... For not being able to use a controller. Yes. Now, the Virtual Boy has a very odd controller setup. So you kind of need a joypad. It's hard to work with when you're utilizing a keyboard and some emulators just don't let you do anything but a keyboard. Some emulators make you pay for joystick functionality like Vibe on the Mac. Some emulators can't deal with the fact that there are two images being processed at once and crash. Some emulators just have horrible slowdown. Most emulators don't have complete compatibility. Again, we're talking about emulators that are PC or Mac, not for the Oculus Rift, not for the Wii, not for these niche things, just straight up, this is a Virtual Boy emulator, play it on your computer type of emulators. They blow. So, for the purpose of showcasing footage, we're gonna be utilizing these different emulators with different effects. They're gonna look different based on what we wanted to showcase in terms of what they could do, and also which emulator worked best for which game. Let's start things off with a bang. This is SD Gundam Dimension War, or Super Deformed Gundam Dimension War. This is one of the rarest and most expensive Virtual Boy games there is generally retailing on eBay from 800 to 1,000, 1,000 plus dollars, maybe, depending maybe, on condition. Maybe not for that price tag, but this game is still definitely the sort of thing that's up my alley because it's got a tactics overlay. Mm -hmm. It's You move your characters around in this sort of very confusing space <laughs> grid and then end up like engaging other units in an actual battle that you play out in like this three-planed side-scrolling mm. experience that is really really confusing and kind of made my experience with the game not that positive yeah. it's easy to understand what's going on it's hard to actually implement you're fighting because you're trying to go between three different planes. It'd be, it'd be easier if it was foreground, background, but here we have foreground, midground, background, and the other guy is constantly moving and you're trying to shoot at him or swipe him. And ultimately, uh, it's just challenging to get used to. I also found the tactics portion of it pretty confusing, but I think if it was more- I, I feel like that I could have gotten used to though. The way that the enemies moved in the game, I feel like I was never going to be fast enough to yeah. keep up. Other reviews I've seen of this game generally give it an average score, like six out of 10, that kind of thing. I would place that it- That seems fair. Around that area. It is definitely not worth the price tag, but if you are a hardcore Virtual Boy or SD Gundam aficionado, it's worth emulating. 
it's it's still pretty pretty cool as a package. Yes. But not not that much as a game. No. Speaking of which, let's talk about the package. I really like the cover art. You sort of have that sort of chibi, super deformed Gundam character sort of turning into a grid-based red virtual boy character. It's neat. I like it. It's cute. Agreed. And the sprite work in-game also looks really good. Mm -hmm. It's just not a great game. Right. It is an expensive game, <laughs> but not a great game. <laughs> Moving on to Virtual Boy Wario Land. That is actually the full title of it. Virtual Boy Wario Land for Virtual Boy. I've been saying it wrong all this time. <laughs> exactly. This is Wario Land on the Virtual Boy. Everything you would expect from Wario Land, you're going to get, which makes it a fantastic game. It really is sort of the crown jewel of the Virtual Boy library because it's just a solid platformer. And unfortunately, it really... This was the game that my experience was most derailed by on emulator. And mm. I had experiences where I was just, like, I was moving through the stage, but it stopped scrolling. Yes. And that's a very difficult thing to find the door when the screen stops rendering the places you're supposed to be going. That can be challenging at times. But I, I did play it on the, the actual hardware, and it was it was pretty fun. I got yeah. through maybe three stages, but it, it played really just as good as any other Wario Land yeah. game. And the 3D aspects of it are okay. Mm -hmm. You have things coming at you and going away. You're jumping in between the foreground and background. It's nothing crazy, but it gets a pass because it is a fun game. Yep. It's Wario Land. So our next game is, I think, one of the titles that really utilized the Virtual Boy's elements to the fullest, and that's mm -hmm. Telerobuxer. That's right. It's a first-person, kind of like a punch-out with robots. Exactly, and it utilizes that first-person perspective and the 3D really well, especially when you get knocked the F <laughs> out. Now, I did some playing of this game, and... I got a little bit more used to it. I like how you can choose to do, with the two different D-pads, blocks in different directions, ducks in different directions, uh, hooks in different directions. You know, you can utilize each hand individually. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but it is fun. I like it more than Smash. <laughs> and <laughs> But it is just too damn hard. Like, I played this thing, and I played this thing, and I played this thing, and I beat the first, like... I beat the first enemy and got destroyed by the second one. It, it, and it took me 20 minutes to, of replaying to beat the first, like, boxer, the first robot boxer. It's so damn hard. Yeah, when I when I played the game, it did seem too hard to me, but I, I hadn't really gotten a hang of the controls yet. I didn't really know what the different animations that my character was in, the different mm -hmm. postures, what they really meant. Yeah. So I feel like once I got over that hump, I would be a lot better. Yeah. But yeah, it did it did seem pretty difficult and I I don't like spikes like you're describing yeah. where the first robot is manageable but difficult and then the second one is just like Parrr! Yeah. I've had this game since 2008 and I've only ever beaten the first robot with great difficulty. And he's he's played it once a night every night since 2008. That's right. That's 11 years of Teleroboxing. Next up we have V-Tetris, which is one of those weird ones because this was released in Japan, but 3D Tetris was released in the US. For some reason, each region got different Tetris games. This game- Were, were they really different they games? They were. Or did they just have different- No, this game is just Tetris. 3D Tetris is like Tetrisphere, but with a cube. Whereas the Japanese version, just got plain old Tetris. As you can see from some this footage- Some would argue that they got the better game. Some could argue that. It is legitimately just Tetris. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, except for the fact that it's Virtual Boy and you'd expect something new-ish. Yeah, the Game Boy had Tetris, and I think it was a pack-in and it was an amazing game and it sold the system and this and that and blah, blah, blah. But in 1995, you wanted something fresher than V Tetris, and you just didn't get it. It's a fine game, and one of the only games that worked on the Mac emulator. <laughs> but it's Tetris. Who cares? I, I kind of want to talk about the the logo for this software company, yes, though. It's, let's do that. It's 
I don't even, it's like a lionfish, I guess, maybe. Yeah. It's got some fins going on here. There's definitely a lion face, but, and somehow this means bulletproof software. It's the best part of the game. Next up on the docket is one of the iconic games of the Virtual Boy Library, mm -hmm. Mario Tennis. And I gotta say, playing it today versus when I was a kid in 1995, it does not hold up very well. Yes, well, you know, it's interesting because it is the first game in the Mario Tennis series. It's weird that this popular series started on the Virtual Boy, but unlike nowadays where it's very zany and wacky, this is just sort of a no-frills tennis game. There's it's, nothing inherently wrong with it. It's kind of cool. You've got the ball coming at you, right yep. at you, but you pretty much line yourself up to take the shot. Yeah, it's fun. But it's just nothing special, mm -mm. I think. It, the character roster is very limited, and the best thing going for it is just, like you said, the sense of 3D as the ball comes forward and back, which is interesting. But it's... it's okay. Yep. Not bad. Didn't age well, though. No. Next up, we have the Japanese version of Jack Bros. Although the version that you're seeing emulated is the American version, because why not? They're essentially the same game, and now you get to see the actual words. This game, at least in the US, is pretty damn rare. It goes for 500 plus dollars on eBay. The Japanese version, generally around 80 to 100 dollars, because it just wasn't as rare. But it is sort of a gauntlet style dungeon crawler with some minor puzzle elements. Yeah, it's it's kind of like Zelda Super Light, if it yeah. only happened in the dungeons, but the gameplay is kind of similar. You're, you've are you got four directions, you have a little bit of an attack, you get some bosses, collect some keys. It's pretty cool though, it, it, yeah. it plays really well. I, it doesn't take that much advantage of the Virtual Boy software, mm -hmm. you can kind of see the stages that you're going to progress to below you mm -hmm. but that's that's about all i noticed but yeah. it's it's still cool i play persona so it's nice to see where jack frost come from mm -hmm. yeah so it, it it's just a fun little game and what's interesting is in the japanese version you have jack frost jack lantern in the u.s version you have Jack Skeleton, but Jack Skeleton in the Japanese and original version is Jack Ripper or Jack the Ripper. So basically they included this like serial murderer rapist in their game. Um, it's a horrible murderer and his attack is a knife and it's much more powerful, but you don't have the range attack. So there's no question as to who this particular character is <laughs> and you're just trying to find your way home and that's the story. So, but regardless, get the Japanese version because it's a lot cheaper and you're not missing much with the story. There's essentially none. Let's talk about Nestor's Funky Bowling. It is a bowling game starring Nestor who appeared in Nintendo Power back in the day. Now, strangely, we got Nestor's Funky Bowling, Japan got Virtual Bowling, which did not include <laughs> Nestor, and it's also like an $800 game on eBay. <laughs> and it's it's marginally different. I mean, it's a different game, but it's still bowling. It's weird. Virtual Boy Collecting is strange as hell because you can spend $800, $900, dollars on something that is essentially just bowling. That said, Nestor's Funky Bowling. Richie, it, thoughts? It's, it's fine. It, it's a bowling game. I probably would have been pretty upset if I had paid full price for it because mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot to it. And I never, mm. I never really got the hang of it, but I played it for five minutes. I played this a lot back when I got my Virtual Boy in 2008 and it was fun, but I knew then and I knew now it's nothing that has a lot of depth. It's just an arcadey experience and that's pretty much it. I, I, I do have to say I was very disappointed in the level of funk, though. The it's not that funky. No, the, the music is a tiny bit funky. But not much. Uh, also, quick note, this runs horribly on the Vibe emulator on Mac. It, it really did. <laughs> it, yeah. Alrighty, our next game is a Virtual Boy Legend, one of the mm -hmm. iconic 
entries in the library red alarm. Mm -hmm. It is essentially Star Fox, but it's wireframe, and it's notable because you can play in first-person perspective, but unlike Star Fox, it is like a date gone horribly wrong, <laughs> where suddenly you say or do something and it all falls apart and you don't understand why. I was playing this game knowing that a lot of people had panned it, and I was enjoying myself. I was having a good time playing it. Then suddenly, because it was wireframe, I went through a passage, that passage was a wall, I didn't understand where to go, and I got so confused, and I remember doing this years ago, and the same thing happened, I was having so much fun, and then it just all fell apart and unraveled <laughs> on me. It was so bad. Uh, but it's so much fun if you can just avoid making that one mistake of getting confused, but it's just hard. It's, it's amazing how much of a difference just the fact that Star Fox on the SNES had color, which yeah. is pretty much the main difference in appearance between that game and Red Alarm. But I, I never got turned around in Star Fox as badly no. as I did in Red Alarm. Part of that is that Red Alarm actually is like a 3D space, and yeah. it's kind of like all range mode from Star Fox 64. And mm -hmm. you can actually move your ship all the way around and head back towards the start of the level, but it's very easy to get turned around if you do My that. My god, it's extremely difficult. So, uh, Red Alarm. Maybe watch like a playthrough of it first. <laughs> Figure out how to play it, then play it. It can be very fun. It can also be horribly frustrating, <laughs> depending. Yeah, but it, it is a really cool experience. One of the first experiences I had driving a ship like that in a virtual space, it's pretty cool. Yeah. So Vertical Force is your standard shmup for the Virtual Boy. The only little wrinkle in the gameplay is the fact that you can move between a higher plane and a lower plane. It's a pretty decent shmup all in all. The problem is, like with Red Alarm, because it's monochrome, it can be challenging to figure out what things are. You know, most shmups, things are a variety of colors, right? And you can determine, okay, this color means this, or this color means that, or at least differentiate things from each other, even if you don't know what that color means. You don't get that luxury with this, so it can be a little bit confusing. Now, I hear you guys in the comments section saying, oh, but Tony, there were some great shmups for the Game Boy. But those didn't run as quickly as this. This runs fast. This is a pseudo-ish 32-bit system, and it can be difficult to figure out what the hell's going on. Yeah, and the the multiplane thing for more often than not it's to your advantage because usually you can only be hit by projectiles that come from the same plane as you. Yep. And there there are a few that are like dedicated from one plane to another attacks, but yeah. for the most part it's kind of like Ikaruga which had two different colors mm. of like bullets that you could be hit yeah. by, and I think you could like switch modes to avoid one set of them. Yep. So this is kind of similar to that function, except there's only one color. So it's not no. always 100% clear what's on what plane. Yeah. You know, when you're watching this emulated footage, I found that it was easier to figure it all out on emulator. <laughs> the screen was bigger. I. You know, I could restart as many times as I wanted to without the Virtual Boy crashing, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. On the actual Virtual Boy system, the confusion is much greater than on an emulated, <laughs> on the emulated footage that you're seeing here. Maybe they just needed to dial down the speed, maybe like 33% yeah. to deal with the Virtual Boy. Yeah, we're old, we can't deal with this. <laughs> can't deal with this crap. Next up we have Panic Bomber. Now this is a Bomberman themed Tetris game. You can choose between different pseudo tetrominoes if you want to. You can do that. It's fun. You have bombs that come in as a puzzler. You can explode stuff. It's pretty much as fun as Tetris is on steroids. <laughs> the gameplay reminds me a lot of like the Yoshi's Cookie family of yeah. puzzler games. It's, it's a simpler simpler sort of thing, but you have like lots of junk tiles falling in on you and mm -hmm. you've got some bombs that can really change the course of a game. And yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's okay. It's not an A plus puzzler. It's yeah. one of the many cash grab puzzlers of that era, yeah. I feel, that reskinned rules we already know. Pun very intended, but it did not blow my mind. <laughs> 
Now here we have a flash cart, the Flash Boy, which I flashed bound high onto, so really showing this does nothing for us. But that said, uh, Bound High is an unreleased prototype of a game that never got released because again, Virtual Boy only had about a year's worth of shelf life, maybe a little bit less. Bound High is interesting because it probably has the very best use of the 3D. And you have this robot slash face bouncing in your face and you have to land on these tiles and kill these enemies and avoid these obstacles and deal with wind and all of these different things. And it, it's just fun. Like it has an amazing 3D experience without needing to be first person. You know what I mean? Right, and it's, it's a very simple arcadey premise to the game. You just bounce up and down and you jump on things. It's yeah. as simple a concept as it can be, and that's usually what you want to do when you're trying to sell people on a new experience. Yeah. And it works. Yeah, it just sucks that it was never released because this should have been like a pack and title. Right. right. Because I think people would have forgiven the whole, oh, well, it's not virtual reality if they would have had like a legitimately good, like, okay, this thing is coming up in my face. It's like a fun arcadey little thing. Just kind of like Tetris was for the, the Game Boy. Fun, arcadey, quick, addictive. That's what this game is. But yeah, that pack-in is the perfect word for it. It could be in the system preloaded. Why That's not? That's right. Exactly. It, it, it is a great little title. Absolutely. And it was never released. Our next, and this is, I believe, our last. Our final, yeah. This, this is it for the Virtual Boy, guys. We're, we're wrapping up here. This is Innsmaus no Yakata. It is based off of a film, based off of an H.P. Lovecraft book. So, a few, a few steps removed from the original source material here. But, you know, it's, it's, how would you describe it? It's kind of a dungeon crawler, first person dungeon crawler. Reminds me a lot of Eye of the Beholder. Mm -hmm. You're kind of in a lot of corridors. Exactly. It is very survival horror-esque. You have to avoid and or shoot monsters. And it is exactly what we always wanted from the Virtual Boy if you were to just look at screenshots. But then <laughs> when you actually play the game, you realize it's grid by grid by grid, and none of the rooms have any sort of differentiating features. There is a map, but if you don't utilize it, it can become very confusing. True to survival horror at the time, and even today, you have limited ammunition, but the controls are just so wonky that this isn't something where you can really strategize. It just becomes a hindrance. It is a very strange game. Yeah, and I, I was never 100% clear as to where the enemies were weakest when I was shooting them, when yeah. they were or were not susceptible to damage. Yeah. And then just like you say, without any distinguishing features or anything, there was never really any mood to the game. And yeah. for like a survival horror game with like you pointed out the brain brain thing, thing on on the cover art there's none of that type of stuff in the game really at least the, at least the monsters so. are pretty creepy looking yeah. but i think that it has good sprite work i think that i'm extremely interested in this game in terms of like the history and the the art and all of those things but it just doesn't play well no mm -mm. Uh, some people like it it's sort of a cult sort of game uh but it it it's just sort of, eh, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not worth the $100 I paid. No. I'm probably going to sell it after this review. So, Richie, that is about half the games on the system and prototype, approximately. So, what are your thoughts on the system in general and the games that we played today? I feel like the whole 32-bit era, other than, like, the PlayStation, was just terrible teenage failures from every game <laughs> developer. You had the 32X, you had the Jaguar, mm. you had the 3DO, which was kind of in that same... You're gonna have a lot of people complaining that <laughs> saying the Jaguar was 64 bit. <laughs> um, but I, get, but I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it's just, it, it, so much ambition, but not yeah. enough focus. Yes, I could definitely see that. I think the Virtual Boy was stuck between a rock and a hard place. We're not gonna go into the history too much right now because it's the end of the video, but you know, it was it was rushed to market. Nintendo didn't care about it that much. They really only cared about the N64. And so poor Gunpei Yokoi and his team <laughs> had to release this thing. And the audience, the market wanted something that had virtual reality. 
But the developers knew they couldn't do that on the Virtual Boy, so they had to create sort of more of an arcade experience instead of a virtual reality experience. And so therein lies this weird disconnect. A lot of the games are very fun mm -hmm. and very playable. And the 3D effects can be pretty cool. But that disconnect still is there. Aside from that, I do think that this is cool just because of the look of it. I do think that the stand is cheap as hell. Mine <laughs> exploded. I, I would say that the hardware overall is just not quite thought all the way through. Because you've got the power in the controller. Yes. So many things can go wrong. So many different connectors can go wrong either here or here <laughs> or here. Or you know what I mean? Like there's just, I understand that they were trying to probably in development, uh, make it a headset. So you don't want the batteries to add weight, but once it was on a stand, you probably could have just done that. Right. You know what I mean? Like it, yeah. I don't know, it's weird. Either way, I wanted to give a couple big thank yous and shout outs. First off to Retro Taku Video Games in Madison Heights, Michigan for allowing us to borrow your stand since mine exploded. <laughs> also a big thank you to MyRetroPop.com for lending us both Jack Bros and also uh, the SD Gundam game. Oh, wow. Uh, which is super rare, super That's expensive, purchased in ballsy Japan. decision on and, their part. And sent over to us, so we very much appreciate that. For those of you that don't know, MyRetroPop.com is an eBay store focusing on retro goodness. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link to uh, that store in the description below, and also information on Retro Taku video games. So again, guys, thank you very much for contributing and helping us do this weird Virtual Boy review. <laughs> Thank you for subscribing, clicking that notification bell, and aside from that, we'll see you all next time. Have a good one, guys. Sorry we, uh, sorry we put you through this. Nah. Sorry I put you through this. We, we, we had to do it, you have to watch. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>